In today's video, we're going to go over some more TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Yo, this isn't even... What is this? It's little balls. Look at this, guys. Some weird... Setup. Well, Texas, it's official. It's snowing. I'm assuming it's Houston, Texas. And yeah, I mean, I don't think that Texas gets snow very often. So I'm sure that that is different to someone that's not really experienced with it, but I'm pretty certain that that's sleet. I know it looks like little plasticky balls, but I'm pretty certain that that's just sleet. Leave a comment on what you guys think. Maybe I'm wrong. Check this out, you guys. This was sent to me in from California. You got to watch this video, you guys, because how do you explain this? Okay. My buddy said he's been videotaping the sun for over two years and he's never seen anything like this. And think about all the amazing videos that I go through. But check this out. Fucking filter, dude. This is how this is how it really looks. This is California. And look, boom, purple. Purple. You see that? Not even this spot right here. Where's that spot? Purple sun? A purple sun? Yeah, come on. Red and blue maze. Look at that. Check it out. Check it out. Look at that. Why is it morphing like that? Look at this. What the hell? <laughs> what just happened? Why did it go to like a spirit bomb like that? Look at that. It's kind of like the cloud is grabbing onto it, holding onto it and not letting it go. Like it's suffocating it. You see that? I told you it's like it's a fight. This is a war. The sun is going through a war right now with these people. I mean, to me, that just looks like clouds passing the sun and the moisture and atmosphere and the clouds is just absorbing all the light from it. I could be extremely wrong, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. We're probably going to be able to talk to animals this year. Yeah, the Earth Species Project is using AI to decode animal language. So they made models of words and their associations of like star to universe and star to like a famous person. And then it makes one of these. The 10,000 most used words in a language get made into a model. The coolest part, I thought, is that they all look almost exactly the same, which ironically looks like a backward 16th note. So they use the same technique on animals and listen to them when they communicate. And then they make a model like one of these. It's then matched with the English model or whatever language you speak and then translated back to you. Sick. But there's another layer. We can only understand things because of geometry, even words. In cymatics, noise is chaos, pattern is order. An ordered sound creates symmetry in the folds of a wave. And then that pattern means something, like the vowels you see up there. Those individual geometries can then be understood by your brain. You can then form those into words or harmony in music. It's all the same. It's even in your DNA. I just want to talk to my dog, and hopefully if we can find some harmony with AI, we can talk to these guys. I really am interested in the technology of AI and helping us understand animal language. I think that that's fascinating. Just like the guy said, I would like to be able to talk to my dog. I think that would be amazing. Um, but it can also be really scary. Like, would you want to hook up one of those language models to an animal that's at the zoo, you know, that's being basically held a prisoner there for the most part. Like, I'm pretty sure that animal has horrible things to say that we probably wouldn't want to hear if that's the case. Maybe we should hear those things to help give animals a little bit more freedom instead of, like, containing them like that. But that goes for my dog as well. Like, what if I start talking to my dog and my dog's like, yeah, I'm miserable. I don't want to live under your roof. I want to be a wild animal and set free. Then I'd be like, I can't really tell you no because <laughs> it's a really tough one, you know? Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I make a video like this almost every day and it would be awesome for you to come back again tomorrow. Based on the data, there is an intelligence operating on that ranch. 
that has command over space, time, over consciousness, and I believe has the ability to communicate if we can understand or develop a common language at some point to be able to interact. Eric Bard has had communication with at least one of these entities involved with manipulating the systems that has command over the technology and the platforms. He's definitely seen and, and documented evidence that we're dealing with an intelligence that does have the desire to communicate. In his case, when the systems were being manipulated and he was dealing with security violations that were occurring repeatedly with our, with our surveillance cameras, he, he literally asked verbally, out loud, if you have something to show me, show me. If you have something to tell me, tell me. And in that instant, the screen morphed, melted, and digitally composed letters. He proceeded to record and screen capture in real time what was happening with the, uh, the equipment. And what was revealed was what I believe to be compelling evidence that we're, we're dealing with with an intelligence that is at least willing to acknowledge and wants their presence known. It essentially had, had the simple response, again, instantaneously, of I living. You're shitting me. Whoa. So Eric Bard, in response to a host of issues with the security, with the security cameras registering that there was something triggering the motion sensors, that there were countless events occurring, upon giving that command, saw the entire screen morph and form the letters I living, and then snap back. All documented, all called on, all caught on camera. That has yet to be fully addressed on the docu-series but is going to be addressed in the future. And it's really his story to tell, but I, if he were here, he'd be telling you the same story. It, it was compelling evidence that we're dealing with a, an intelligence on the ranch that has the ability to manipulate technology and systems instantaneously and, um, and has the ability to communicate and is has intention there's volition i did a little bit of research on skinwalker ranch to get a better understanding of exactly what that place is and i i got a little bit more information i highly recommend looking them up but basically they are it's a large plot of land in utah where scientists do studies of space communication and drone technology and all different kinds of things but it it just makes me wonder there's it, it does it tie into the same because if they are communicating with an unknown entity now hear me out this might be not even in the same ballpark but if they are communicating if they have a device that they are communicating with an unknown entity would that be the same of someone using a Ouija board to contact spirits what if they're just communicating with spirits with their technology that they have and it's no different than a Ouija board, you know? Like, what do you guys think about that? Is it totally different because we're talking about technology and technology reaches living beings compared to spiritual items that connect, that contact spirits? Like, is there a difference really or what? Apparently, Gen Z is like aging really rapidly. It is mainly because of the stress. Come here. We live in a time nowadays where millennials look way younger for their age, while Gen Z looks way older for their age. If you don't believe me, I'm Gen Z. Get closer. I am Gen Z and nobody ever believes me. When my mom and I walk out in public, people think that my mom is my younger sister. 
right? When I tell people, oh, I'm going to go hang out with my family, they think I'm talking about my children. I don't have kids, right? I'm talking about my parents. I'm still the child. Does that make sense? I'll, I'll put it to you like this. Zendaya is older than me. Tom Holland is older than me. That's You get what I'm saying right now? There was one time I wanted an autograph from Dwayne The Rock Johnson, right? I was standing for hours for this autograph. And when he walked up to me, I said, can you please sign this poster? It's for Jordan, right? He then took it and put, dear Jordan, your dad is a great guy. He stood out here for hours and then gave it back to me. And before I can correct him, he looked at me and said, Times were way more difficult back when we were kids, am I right? And then he tapped my shoulder and left. Dwayne is 52. I am 26. What what I'm saying is, so Gen Z definitely looks older. I'm not going to lie to you. That, <clears throat> when he said that Tom Holland and Zendaya are older than him, that basically made my jaw drop. I've seen this guy's content for a couple of years now on the internet. And I always thought, you know, he was just an older guy. I did not know that I am older than him by a lot, honestly. Like, I am surprised. I'm not a flat earther or a globe earther, but if you force me to pick one, I pick flat earth for the following reasons. For one, we might have a credible scientific explanation for the firmament. And if you click on this comment and watch the original video, you'll see what I mean. But to make a long story short, the ozone layer is comprised of O3. O3 freezes into a solid at 420 degrees below Fahrenheit. Outer space, and flat earthers don't give me a hard time about that term, it's outer space. It's space out there. It's the best term we have. The temperature of outer space is negative 450 degrees Fahrenheit, making it colder than the freezing point of oxygen. Therefore, it's highly possible that that oxygen is freezing up there into a glass-like substance. When oxygen freezes, it turns a light blue. Hmm. Now, if oxygen is freezing at the top layer that touches space, right below that, it would be liquid oxygen. Which would, of course, explain the waters above. So how would solid and liquid oxygen stay all the way up there? Well, as soon as it got warm, it turned into a gas, and then it just flowed up there. And then it get cold again and turn into water and ice. Here's where it gets really interesting. A lot of people will tell you that the rainbow is shaped like a bow because each individual water drop is circular. That's an absolute BS lie. The water provides a screen. The rainbow is always there. We just can't see it all the time. When the rainfall happens, then we see the rainbow. So the rainbow is always a bow. And why? Because the light that is emitted from the prism reflects the shape of the prism. Because we live under a convex dome prism. Now, if you subscribe to the idea that the ice wall is all around the outside edges of the earth, again, it would explain it connecting to the frozen firmament. When we get to the edge, we get to the coldest place out in outer space. And why is it so cold? Well, people need to understand what energy, temperature, and time actually is. There's lots of people saying that you can't have temperature without matter. That's absolutely untrue. You just can't measure it without matter. But mark my words, if you stuck your hand outside into space, it would freeze. So why does this happen? Because there's nothing energetic happening out there. Therefore, all the energy from your hand would leave and go out into space to try to equalize. Right? Because nature, matter, tends to try to find equilibrium in energy, in states of matter, etc., etc. Heat is directly correlated to energy. When something is energized, it heats up. Right? So when you heat up a molecule, everything gets faster in there and it starts vibrating. Right? That's energy. It requires energy for the molecule to vibrate. And the faster it vibrates, the more temperature it has, the more heat it has. So if you go out where there's no energy in outer space, which is very limited because all we're getting is the radiating energy from the sun, no convection, no conduction, matter is going to get frozen into its solid state very quickly, no matter what the matter is. All matter freezes into a solid state at zero degrees Kelvin. Outer space is five degrees Kelvin. You only need five more degrees to be at absolute zero. And what happens at absolute zero? Time stops. Literally. Time doesn't exist. Because what is time? 
Well, time is a construct created by human beings. And we use measurement devices to measure time. But those measurement devices need to be energized, whether it's hands on a clock or the rotation of uh, electrons on a cesium atom. That requires energy to keep it into a cyclic state. It requires that energy. If there's no energy, if there's no temperature, then time doesn't pass. Interestingly enough, heaven is thought to be a timeless place. Well, technically, if heaven is outside of this firmament plane that we exist on, that it is in fact timeless if it gets to that place where there's no temperature. And for all the haters and trolls that are going to come into the comments and try to make fun of people that are interested in this theory or people who try to speculate on it and ask more questions, if you just come and say, oh, you're dumb, but then don't explain yourself, understand that you're the one that looks like you're dumb. Looks like you're just trying to be the bully that doesn't understand something, like we're in grade school. I'm not saying I'm entirely right about all this, but these are some interesting ideas to play with, especially since most scientists up at the top lie to us all the time. We don't know who to trust, so we're speculating based on logic. So if you're interested in having a healthy conversation with another human being, ask some questions, have conversations in the comments. And if you're going to be a jerk and a bully because you can't wrap your head around these ideas, we're just going to block you. I thought this was explained amazingly. I really enjoyed this conversation, even though it wasn't a conversation. I enjoyed this topic. I think he explained it wonderfully. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to call cap. I'm not going to give my opinions on this subject specifically because he pretty much summed up everything that makes sense to me as well. I'm not a flat earther, I'm not a globe earther, which I'm going to call those glurthers. That's a kind of a silly word, but flat earthers, which are flurthers and glurthers. So we have flat earthers and we have globe earthers. I'm going to call them flurthers and glurthers. And with that, I'm in the middle. I'm right in the middle making my peace. And I love learning about it. I love 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 hearing the conspiracies i love hearing the science i love it all i think it's awesome but to what this guy is saying i have no quarrels with it i think it sounds accurate it doesn't disprove that there isn't a glurth and it doesn't prove that there is a flirth from what he was saying it does make sense the only problem that i have with fake space or space being real or the planet being flat or the planet being round is even known we try to debunk whether it's a real flat planet or if it's a real round planet we still use mathematics and science to take these guesses that's been given to us by the same people that's potentially lying to us and that just always makes me feel like well, what do I, what should I believe if they're saying space is fake because of all these scientifical reasons? Am I to believe the scientists that tell me that space is fake? Or do I believe in the same science that tells me space is real? It's a really conflicting thing. So exactly what was said in the skiff during the last UFO meeting? I think I know. What do you think was the biggest takeaway from today? Uh, about when you'll start to be able to learn uh, what's being done and what is the fruit of all the money that's being put into this? Well, unfortunately, since it was in the skip, I can't tell you what the big issue was, but I will tell you that it provided, I'll say, some validity to what's been said. Tim Burchette might not be able to tell you what was going on behind the closed doors of the skiff. I can, by using the word compartmentalize. Word of the day. Compartmentalization and interdepartmental, very compartmentalized. So essentially, to break that down, what this big word means is that the information is there, but it is spread across many different platforms. That being said, if there's one thing you guys are going to learn from me this year in 2024, it is that you need to learn to read between the lines when it comes to information, especially about UFOs. You do that, I promise you, your mind will be awakened and you will learn a heck of a lot. That being said, start paying attention. Here we go. I think it's incredibly important to listen to the specific words that Grush uses. You know, Grush never said extraterrestrial or alien. He said interdimensional. Call it interdimensional, call it shadow biome, crypto terrestrial. I mean, there's a lot of different theories. I think that that's incredibly important because those are the types of things that when we go in there, we, you know, there's just certain things that I think that it's important that you guys listen to on that. I'm you said interdimensional. I mean, now we. 
what does that term, is this something that bends time and space? What are you getting at? I think that Grush, when I had talked to him on whether these were specifically extraterrestrials or alien in origin, he said interdimensional. He refused to use certain terms. And I think that's incredibly important because I think that that's really the question we're all wanting to know, right? Do you hear anything that you didn't know? Are you being frustrated by this like some of your colleagues are? Well, obviously, look, the process is extremely frustrating. But actually, this is the first real briefing that we've had that we've now made, I would say, progress on some of the claims Mr. Grush has made in his complaint and some of the claims he provided to Congress. Do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. I guess human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. Do you have any personal knowledge of people who have been harmed or injured in efforts to cover up or conceal these extraterrestrial technology? Yes. Personally. Have you heard, have anyone been murdered that you would think, that you know of or have heard of, I guess? I have to be careful asking that question. I directed people with that knowledge to the appropriate authorities. Maybe in a, um, if we could get it, get in a um, confidential area skiff, we could talk about that. But unfortunately, um, we were denied access to the skiff. And that's very unfortunate in this, in this scenario. One thing in particular that really caused me to be concerned about this whole thing is that Grush had stated to myself, Representative Burchett and another member on the phone, that there were people that were hurt hiding this information and keeping this information safe and or trying to come forward with this information. What I can tell you is I believe that claim after now leaving. How much of all done. Can you get us, give us a sense of what new questions you have? Well, right. So <clears throat> let me just give you a hypothetical because I'm not going to share anything from a classified briefing. But if someone makes 10 claims and then someone says, well, we didn't look into all 10 because they weren't all in the report, but hey, we found these six very credible based on it. Well, then you would want to go attack those six. That's what I'm saying. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I can't get into the specifics of the hearing, but let's just say that all of us were very interested in the substance of his claims. It didn't disqualify anything I've thought in the past. What comes out of this meeting? What do you do in response to this stonewalling? Well, it's just whack-a-mole. You go to the next one until we get some answers. Uh, we got some pretty definitive stuff that would... <clears throat> that I'm sure y'all get somewhere else. Keyword. I'm sure y'all get somewhere else. Just to reiterate, if you're not following along, that somewhere else is the UFO hearing where David Grush spoke, which were the video clips we've seen earlier. About what was discussed, and and um, to me it was, uh, it, it moved, it, it uh, made what I think more credible. So they did tell you something, they didn't tell you that. That's correct. Okay. Because you first came out, you said we didn't learn anything new. Well, um, we didn't learn anything new. It just it just verified what I thought. This is a serious topic, and it deserves um, serious attention. The term that what they were exploring here were, per phrase, interdimensional beings. Is that something that we're dealing with? It, it is not a fringe topic. It is a serious national security topic. So, again, to sum this entire video up, in case you missed it, I believe that what happened behind the closed doors of that skiff was talking about the incident that David Grush had, whether that be someone he knew ended up getting murdered or someone he knew got hurt personally. Um, but that is my theory, and that is the information that I was gathered looking between the lines of our congressmen and women. I really, this always irks me a little bit. When you hear these talks about Congress and political figures holding information from us, it's such a sucky thing. And they like to use the term, it's a national security thing, so that they can't provide us that full information because technically, as a taxpayer, we should have that information. We should have the right to any US information that's going into those rooms. We pay for that scenario. So it's just like when you're holding that information from people, it's just like, why are all of the tax dollars going towards things that we can't even get information on? So it, it really, we really should start doing something about this and forcing and demanding information because 
why are we paying for this stuff? All right, guys, I think I'm going to end the video there. And with that being said, have a good day.